Hi, I'm Pete Gould at Gould Gear and Electric in Murphy, North Carolina. Today we're going to talk about your Dodge Diesel exhaust brake option and the vacuum pump itself. We're going to do a little bit on the diaphragm, which is what goes bad and starts making a racket under the hood, kind of going duck, 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 and you're, you're happy to find out it wasn't a rod knock, but it's just a diaphragm making a racket. So. I'm going to take one of these apart and show you what's inside of it and show you how it works. I'm going to show you how we fix them and I'm going to show you how to replace it. So let's get on with that. This is how the vacuum pump sits on your engine block under the hood on this big black bracket with a couple other accessories here and there. And what you have to do is unbolt the vacuum pump on the bracket. So you take the bracket off the engine and this is just what you're going to have in your hand after you pull a few bolts off that hold it on. Now the serpentine belt is going to be around the pulley so you find the belt tensioner and release it and just take the, the belt off the pulley gently and set it down so that you don't lose the rest of the track of the belt and have to figure out how to reroute it and stuff. Now on the back of, of the bracket, there's three bolts that hold the vacuum pump onto the bracket. You take them off, and then you'll just lift the vacuum pump right off the bracket and set the, back, the bracket aside. Now the pulley I just have held on this, so I'm going to take it off to get it out of the way for us so you can see better. With the pulley off, you can see that in the front of the vacuum pump, there's a bearing. That's a sealed bearing right there and it's held in by a C-clip. That's what holds that in there. And these are pretty good bearings. They, they, they seem to last a long time too, but when we repair the pumps, we remove it and we put new bearings and clips in them. Now what goes wrong with the diaphragm? When you take yours off, hold the pump straight up like that because there's one ounce of oil in this lower unit. That's all it takes is exactly one ounce. And you could put Pretty much the best oil for it is the same oil that you're putting in your diesel motor now. You just fill it up three quarters of the way in there or just one ounce of oil. Well, you take these four little 10 millimeter head screws out that hold the diaphragm on and you remove the diaphragm. Now inside here there's a little black o-ring. This retaining clip I'll show you in a second you want to make sure you replace that with the new o-ring that comes with the diaphragm. And also inside there, there's an eccentric or a cam you can see turning. And that's what activates the push rod in the bottom of the diaphragm. You want to make sure that that's good. You can put a screwdriver in there and gently turn it. And when it comes up, you shouldn't be able to turn it at all. And then you're sure that the shaft inside of the lower unit isn't broken. So that's all we're going to do to the lower unit. We'll set it aside and I'll show you what's going to be wrong with your diaphragm. This rubber hose on the bottom side, it comes out right where it says outlet. Take and squeeze that tight and pull it out and when you look inside, you're going to see a little blue disc in there that's probably going to fall out in your hand and it's going to look like that. And that's what happened, that came loose. That used to look like this. And the, there's a little rubber tin on there that goes into the diaphragm in a hole there. It presses through it and it holds it and it just it works like a check valve. So when we rebuild these, we replace that with a different type valve that's got a firmer material to it. And hopefully it'll last a lot better. So this diaphragm, as you see on the bottom, is all crimped over and that's what holds it together. And to speed things up, I've, I've uncrimped this like we do when we take it apart. I'll go ahead and I'm going to pop this in half for you and I'll show you what's on the inside. This little retaining clip that's on here, that goes on there to hold the, the uh, inlet tube in place there should it come loose. And it faces with the, the side that you see there is going to face down and you put that on just before you put the diaphragm on. Now if you get a diaphragm without the inlet tube, you can just tap them out with a hammer. It comes out of there like that. And when you put it in the new one, you just put it in over top of right where it says E on inlet. 
and you take a crescent wrench or something and put it right over top of that, just tap it right back in again. And the fork's going to make sure that that doesn't come out of there. And again, when you put it back together, don't forget the O-ring. So what's inside here? That rubber valve you saw we showed about that fell out of there, that went bad, that's what's making the racket. Now there's another one on the inside underneath this inlet tube. So we use a small pair of a tool like this, a crimping tool, and we peel all that back, and then this comes apart. Now what's inside the diaphragm on the bottom is another rubber disc right there, that little valve, a check valve, and this one's usually good. Well, we replace that anyway. So once we're done with that, this is what we're going to have after they're replaced with one new one on each side. Now before we do that, this is the diaphragm. This is what makes the actual vacuum. And it has almost like a valve guide on a valve stem to an engine on it that goes down inside there. And this is what the other side of it looks like. And that sits inside here just like that. That's what we just took out. And this shaft itself goes through a miniature oil seal. It's the smallest oil seal I've ever seen. It's very similar to the vacuum pump oil seal to the O2, just a lot smaller. And it works just like a valve wiper in an engine where the, the intake and exhaust valves go up and down. Now there's a big spring inside here and it goes underneath the diaphragm to push it back and underneath the cap where the tube was where that gets pressed on and it pushes it back and forth. Sometimes that spring breaks and it makes a racket too and we replace and put new springs in them when we rebuild them. Now on the bottom part of the diaphragm you can see it has what looks like a valve guide and this is what that looks like out. And this guide is pressed into the bottom piece of the vacuum pump. So we have to press that out and then this new oil seal goes in and the valve, well not the valve guide, the shaft guide goes inside that and that's what guides the diaphragm up and down inside of the diaphragm housing itself. Now ready to go back together again when we repair the diaphragm, everything's all cleaned up and nice and looking good. Our oil seals in, our guide is pressed back in, the new valves are in and we have a little lube in there. We just slip the diaphragm back into the lower housing. Then the new spring goes on the top and the cover we put on and the cover of course the hole we have it marked to line up where it goes so your outlet hose is going to reach where it belongs. Now we press this together and now I'm going to show you the neatest tool we made to crimp this back together again. This is our tool we use to crimp these back together again. This is really a cool idea some expert machine shop friend of mine up in Indiana at Provident Tool made. Now if you look at this you can see the bevel on this side and the shape of it and the shape on the other side. And what he did, he made this lower piece to accept the diaphragm and we put the top of the diaphragm down into the tool and then we take the first edge to start the fold the way it needs to go. That locks the diaphragm in place on the top and the bottom. Now let's take it over to the press. Now in a light press, we just push down and you can see the inner piece goes in and very simply that does the first fold. Let's take a look at that. Now I'm going to take the, the diaphragm out of my first roll there and it's on. And you can see that this tool has already begun to roll the edge over that we peeled back to get it apart. 
what we're going to do now is go back and do the second stage and finish the crimp. Our line is still aligned and this disc by the way that, that fits down in there and keeps everything aligned I'll show you on this. This little disc you wonder what that is? That's the muffler. That's a little silencer so this thing doesn't make any more racket than it does. I'll show you on the newest pump that they made for these also that fits the heavy duty pump. They might have sized it. They put a bigger muffler on it to make it even quieter. Now the first fold we just did was with this edge of the tool. Now we turn the tool over and we'll use this edge which is almost flat but not quite and we'll put that in there and bring it over to the press and finish our assembly. Now for the final punch Okay, let's take it out and take a look at it. There she is. Just like brand new. It's got to be one of the neatest things even I've ever played with in this shop. I enjoy that. And I got to thank Craig at Provident Tool up in Wakarusa, Indiana for making that for me. These are our repair diaphragms. This is what it looks like when it's finished. And this is what you get. We'll send you it's all done, it's all crimped, it's ready to go back on, it comes with the o-ring in it. And that's what we sell repaired. And we think they're every good every bit as good as a new one. Also, we sell the factory diaphragms brand new to put on it if you just want a brand new one. We have plenty of them all the time. And this is what the heavy duty diaphragm looks like. Bolts right on there, does everything else, just the base is a little bit bigger, the diaphragm inside is a little bit taller, and it has a quieter muffler on it for the new diesel engines that they don't even want to hear run. And that's what the heavy duty diaphragm looks like. Now we sell repaired pumps where we go through them and we rebuild the whole pump basically. And we sell them with the original pulley if you want it with the original pulley. They're a little less expensive. And we just clean the pulleys up and make sure they're not chipped up bad or anything and going to eat up your serpentine belt. Now we also sell it repaired with a pulley that we designed for this. And this pulley is a much better pulley and we think it is definitely the key to making these last a whole lot longer and all of our new pumps come with the new redesigned pulley on them because we take the other pump off. Now the difference in the pulley is merely the size. This is the pulley that Gould Gear makes and this is out of our own mold and our own, our own casting and we have these made in Chicago. This is the pulley that, that comes on it, the factory pulley. And if you put them side by side you can see the difference. Our pulley is taller, which makes this pump spin at less RPMs, which is of no importance whatsoever to the effect of what the pump does to operate your exhaust brake. It just spins a million gazillion times less in its lifetime. It's a nice pulley. We're very happy with it. And one other thing, you don't have to change your serpentine belt. You use your original serpentine belt. When you change it, even with our larger pulley, it fits. A lot of people don't know and here's the number of the gator back belt. This serpentine belt is available anywhere. If you lose your belt and you have the exhaust brake option, usually you go to find another belt and nobody has a clue what you're talking about and you're stuck out in the middle of nowhere. This belt is made by Goodyear and it's the number 4081295 and that belt will work exactly the way you want it to work with your Jake brake exhaust pump. For the most current up-to-date information on your Dawes diesel and for the best information and technical data everything available all the way back to the 8999 first gen model turbo diesels in these Dodge registers you might want to get this TDR magazine. The turbo diesel register is an excellent magazine. They're from Cumming, Georgia which is right down by Atlanta 
and there's more information inside this book about your new truck, your old truck, all the stuff that goes wrong with it, all the hot new items you could buy for your truck from performance to upgrades to everything with all of the top sellers in the business. And these people down there in Georgia are the nicest people you'd ever want to deal with. They sell our products also. So the Turbo Diesel Register is online and their store is Geno's Garage. G-E-N-O-S Garage.com and there's about everything you want to buy for your truck in there at excellent prices and good quality. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.